Let's talk about Lennox Gastaut syndrome. So this is a childhood epilepsy syndrome that normally peaks between the ages of three and five years. There are many different causes. One big cause is infantile spasms or West syndrome, and this tends to lead to a poor prognosis when it evolves into Lennox Gastaut. Uh, other epilepsy syndromes can also evolve into Lennox Gastaut. Um, genetic disorders, cortical malformations, tuberous sclerosis, ischemic injuries, meningitis, and trauma can also lead to Lennox Gasto, and sometimes no cause is found, and we call that cryptogenic. The hallmark clinical feature is that the patients will have multiple seizure types. They can have tonic seizures such as tonic stiffening of the arms, atonic, or they lose tone and fall, um, atypical absence seizures, myoclonic jerks, and they can also have non-convulsive status epilepticus. They can have normal neurodevelopmental uh, status until they start having their seizures, and then after that they'll have some cognitive impairment. The classic EEG interictally shows one and a half to two and a half hertz generalized spike wave pattern that is most predominant in the frontal area. This is also called the atypical spike and wave pattern. Um, if they're sleeping, uh, the EEG can also show 10 to 20 hertz paroxysmal fast activity or a slow poly spike pattern. In terms of diagnosis, it's based on the triad of findings, having multiple seizure types, having the EEG characteristics described, and having cognitive impairment. Normally, further workup to find the etiology would consist of an MRI and possibly metabolic and genetic testing. This is a medically refractory epilepsy. A lot of patients will need multiple types of treatment. Uh, we'll start off with talking about seizure medication. Valproate's probably the most commonly used medication. It's a broad spectrum anti-seizure medication and it treats multiple seizure types in the disease. There are other medications that are also approved for the treatment of Linux gasto including clobazam, topiramate, lamotrigine, felvamate, and rufinamide and cannabidiol. If you're using cannabidiol, it does need liver enzyme monitoring. Most patients will need more than just one anticonvulsive. Some patients will need ketogenic diet, and some patients will progress to needing surgeries such as a vagal nerve stimulation or corpus callosotomy or some sort of lesional surgery. The prognosis is generally poor, so seizure freedom is rare even in adulthood, and most patients will have residual intellectual disability.